Hi there. Recently I started to learn the C programming language. And also recently I found out about the Raylib graphical library for C. And I started to make a game with it. And it was surprisingly simple. So pretty quickly I was able to create this little beginning of a game where I can jump with this ball and I can jump over these platforms here. So I can go over here, I can jump on this and I can jump over there. Now this has some bugs but it kind of works. As you can see it's bouncing around very weirdly. But still I was able to do this very quickly. So I thought let me document this learning process. Maybe it will be beneficial for someone or educational or entertaining or all of the above. So let's try to make a game in C with Raylib. So I will close this game and I will start over from scratch. So the first thing we have to do is we have to actually install Raylib. So how we do that is we go to the raylib.com website and we have the code here somewhere. We click here and we get to the GitHub repository of Raylib. Now at first I thought that it would be just as simple as just downloading this file, this relib.h, and then including that in my main.c. But it didn't really work that way. I had to do some other extra steps. But let's now actually see if it works now because I already installed all the dependencies. So let me cp from downloads the relib.h here. And let's make a new file main.c. And here we will include raylib.h and then we will say int main and we will return zero. And then we have to add some boilerplate here. Now I don't remember anymore how it worked. It was something like set fps. Now raylib is cool in that we can actually open this raylib.h and then we can search from here. So we just search for set fps. fps. Set target fps. So this is what we have to call. So let's call that set target FPS. Now I wonder why I do not have any auto completion here. Maybe I have to save this file first. Yes, now I think I have it. So let's put here 60 FPS. Then we had to do something else. We had to make a while loop when not window should close. Then we do something. And then we had to say something like begin drawing. And then we have to say end drawing. And between these we can put our code that will draw stuff on the screen. Now I think there was something else. I think there's like a set window. Let's go to reddit.h and say window. Init window, that's it. So let's go back here and say init window. And we have to say the width. Let's do 800 by 600. And we will set a title, my game. And perhaps that's all. Then we can draw like a ball in the middle. Or first we have to clear the screen so that it will fill it with a white background. So we can call clear, clear background. And we get the color. And Raylib has nicely or not so nicely used things like red for a red color. It is defined somewhere, define red. So we have all these colors here defined and we are going to use white and there's a ray white as well that they use in the examples and apparently it's not completely white. So we can just use white. So let's say white. So this will make a white background and then we can draw a ball here. So draw circle, 3D, not 3D, just circle. And we pick a center for the circle. So we can in fact do something like this. Let's set here int window width, or just say width, 800 and int height is 600. And then we can pass these into this one. So this will be width and this will be height. And then we can do something here. If we want to put the circle in the middle of the screen, we can say that the position is width divided by 2 and height divided by 2. And then we will have the radius. So let's actually say ball size. And let's have a color here. Let's call this red. And let's define the ball size here. So let's say int 
No, this was float. Float ball size is, let's say, 40 pixels. And maybe we have to do like 0 0.0. Not quite sure about that. So for some reason I have some squigglies here. Float ball size. Okay, VS Code is just being slow. So now everything should work. Now that might be all. So let's actually try and compile this and see what will happen. But we have to use some special flags when we compile this. So let's in fact do code build.sh and let's put our build script here. So we will say that gcc o game main.c and it was something like l raylib. That's a flag we have to pass. Something like this. Let's see what will happen. So I will say First I have to schmod plus x this build.sh and then I can do build.sh. And actually we didn't get any errors. That is amazing. So let's see if it actually works. I don't think it will work. It actually works. So you can just use it like this. So you just include the raylib.h. But I had to do some installation before it worked like this. Or was it just the l raylib? Because before when I tried this, I like cloned the whole repository and then I had to do like make and make install and all kinds of stuff. But now it works just like this. So if you want to try this yourself and you have problems with it, then you can go to the Raylib website and you can go to the wiki. And here you will have different kind of instructions for different operating systems. So if you are on Linux, you can go to the new Linux. And yes, I had to do exactly this. So I installed CMake and then I installed all these libraries and then I used this build Raylib using make. And I cloned the repository and did all of this. And I had to use this shared one because the others didn't work for me for some reason. So this is the place you have to go if you want to figure out how to install this, if it doesn't work directly by including the Raylib.h in your project. So I will actually copy this and I will save it. I will say code description.txt and I will save here. Raylib installation. So that I remember to put it in the description of this YouTube video. Okay, so now we have a game already. <laughs> well, it's just this game and we have a red circle in the middle of the game. So now we should add some kind of gravity so that the ball moves down. Now, I'm a simple man, I will just do it like this. I will add an integer of ball velocity and I will set it to 4, let's see. And let's actually move these width divided by 2 and height divided by 2 into their own variables. So this will be ball x and ball y. And I will set them here as well. Int ball x is this and int ball y is height divided by 2. And then here in the loop, I will just say ball y plus equals ball velocity. So this should increase the ball y position, which will make it move down with every single frame. So if we do that and then we build and we run it, then we should have a ball that's moving down. That's great. Now, of course, it just moved off screen. So we have to do something about that. And it was actually moving down at a constant velocity. So I would like to add to the velocity every time so that it speeds up. So I can say something like ball velocity plus equals one. Now maybe I should use a float here so that I don't have to increase it by one with every frame. But let's see what will happen now. Okay, <laughs> it moves very quickly. So now we should detect somehow when the ball hits the bottom of the screen. So how do we detect that? Well, we could do something like if. So let's check if the bottom of the ball is at the bottom of the screen. So how do we get the bottom of the ball? Well, let's say int ball bottom is ball y plus ball size because it is round and this is the radius. So the ball y is the middle of the ball and then we add the radius so that will be the bottom of the ball. So we can say if ball bottom is greater than the height. Now I might use window height here. Window height. 
sorry, with a window height. So that makes a bit more sense. So if the ball bottom is greater than the window height, or well, greater than or equal to, then we should stop the ball from moving. So we can just say ball velocity is zero. And I think that we should also move the ball to the bottom because if the velocity is such that it, it will jump over the bottom, then we want to move it back so that it doesn't get stuck like too low. So we can say ball y equals window height minus ball size, ball size. So we get the bottom of the window minus the radius of the ball. Because if we put the ball in the bottom of the window, then it will be from the middle of the ball. So we have to minus ball size. So let's try and run this. And it stopped there, it was very fast. So now we should make the ball be able to jump. Let's do that. So in order to do that, we have to say if key pressed is key pressed and we provide the key. And again, we can use the um, down, sorry, space, key space. If we press the space, then we should make the ball velocity negative, so it will move up. And then because we are changing the velocity, we are adding to the velocity every time, then it should automatically start to slow down. So if we do something like ball velocity is 30, then it will start moving 30 pixels every time, but with every frame it will slow down and finally it will start moving down. So if we do that and we build and run this game again, then we can jump. Or not. It did something, but <laughs> not quite sure what is happening there. So, sorry, I have to put minus 30, of course. So, build it, and now we can jump. <laughs> That's a very big jump. Okay, that's great. So now we can jump. So in order to increase the gravity, we can add to this number. So we could actually call this gravity. Now I wonder if there is some gravity thing in Rayleigh built in. Int gravity is, let's put three, maybe that is better. So that's too much. We might have to use like floats here because it is moving too fast. But now we can jump. Okay, that's pretty nice. So now we can jump with this ball. But we cannot move left and right. So let's do that next. So we will just add here. If is key pressed left. It is probably key left. Yes. If we are pressing left, then we should say that the ball x minus equals, let's say, 4. And then we will do the same thing with key right. Key right. And the ball x plus equals 4. So now if we run this, then now we can actually move. But I have to press, like, I can't press and hold. I think there's another thing we can use. It's is key, is key, is key down. Yes, the press only does it once. But if we say is key down, then it will repeat this all the time that it, it's down. So let's run this and then... Now we can move left, and we can move right, and we can jump, and we can jump and move, and now it looks pretty nice. So now we can jump. Now the problem here is that we can jump many times. So it's like Flappy Bird now. <laughs> we can <laughs> jump with this ball, and we could actually make Flappy Bird, but I'm not going to do that. So we should detect if we are on the ground, then we can jump. So could we create some sort of function that checks if the ball is on the ground. So let's do int ball on ground. And we should pass in the ball y and the window height. And then what we should do is that we should say if ball y is greater than or equal to window height minus ball height, ball, ball size, then we return 1. Otherwise we return 0. So then, I think that was the same thing that I did somewhere. Up here I said, if ball bottom is okay. So I can just replace this with if ball on ground. And I give it the ball y and the window height. 
So I can remove that. And then I can say here, if ball on ground and key space is pressed. So actually I might just move this up here. If I know how to use this IDE, I could do that. So if the ball is on the ground, we make sure it's on the ground. And then if we are pressing space, then we jump. So if we run this again, we get an error because we have to pass in the ball size here. Ball size. So let's pass it in here, ball size. And of course this is C, so we have to say what these are. This is an int, and this is an int, and this is an int as well. So let's try this again. So now we can jump, we can move left, we can move right, right. We can jump, but we cannot jump unless we are on the bottom. So if I press space many times, it won't jump. It only jumps once. That's great. So what should we do next? Well, I had those platforms here. So I would like to do that. So we could jump on top of platforms. So let's do that. How could I make a platform? Well, a platform is just a rectangle. So I will say draw rectangle. And this gets the X position and the Y position, which is the upper left corner of the rectangle. So I can say something like, can we use like percentages? So if we use like um, window width times 0 0.1, and this has to be an integer, so maybe we have to use some like abs to make it an absolute number. Or can we just cast to int? I guess we can do that too, int. But which one, which one is casted to int? We have to do this. And then the Y position will be similar. Maybe I should just use the apps. This is kind of weird, but let's do that. And Y would be window height times, let's say, 70%. And then the width would be, I will use apps. And this will be window width times 0.2. And then the height will be abs window height times 0 0.05, 5%. Okay, and I will change these to abs. And perhaps I could put them on their own lines since we are short on space because I'm zoomed in so much. Okay, so now we are drawing a rectangle and we have to add the color. So the color will be black. And let's run this and see if it will work. Um, it will not work. We got some kind of warnings. Ah, we have to include stdlib so that we can use apps. So let's do that and let's try one more time. Okay, now we have a platform there. But of course we cannot jump on this platform. So how do we do that? We should detect where is the floor at any given moment. So. How would we do that? Let's do this. We can actually change our ball on ground function so that it will detect wherever we are, are we on the ground. And the ground can differ between a platform and the actual bottom of the screen. Now maybe we could add a platform to the bottom of the screen so we don't have to check two different things. So let's actually do that. But I think to make this easier, we should use some structs. So now I have ball Y, ball size, and ball X. But what if I create a struct? If I say struct um, type def struct, and I call this ball, and the ball will have an int X and an int Y and a float. Sorry, it's an int. Int ball uh, int size. No, it is a float actually. So let's call it float. And these should be semicolons. And then when I use this ball on ground function, I will actually pass in the ball ball. So the ball struct. So I don't have to pass two different things. Then I just say ball dot y and ball dot size. And then here I can say that ball ball equals, and I think there's some special thing that I can do like, this and x equals window width divided by 2 and y equals window height 
divided by 2. And size equals 40.0. So then I can remove the ball size and I can remove these. And perhaps I could move these on their own lines. And I could move the velocity there as well. So I can say velocity is, what did I use? 4. Can I end in a comma in C? Let's see. <laughs> so I will add a int velocity. Okay. So then I have to change all of these ball y's to ball dot y and ball size. Actually here I just give it the ball and I remove this and ball velocity will be ball dot velocity and ball size will be ball dot size and ball x will be ball dot x. So let's see if this still compiles and runs. Yes, we can still jump around and everything works. Okay. Now, we might want to do the same thing with the platforms. Since we're going to have multiple platforms, then maybe we could define a type called platform. So type def struct, and it is a platform. And the platform will also have an int x and an int y. So basically it is a rectangle. So we have to pass in everything that we used here when we draw the rectangle. So x, y, width, height and color. But let's not use the color, let's just make it black for now. So x, y, int, width, int, height. Okay? And then we can do something here. We should actually have an array of these platforms. So then we can go through each of them and first of all draw them and then check the collision between the platform and the ball. So let's do that. So to the ball on ground, we won't pass the window size, the window height anymore. We will pass an array of platforms. So maybe we should call ball on platform and we will pass in platform platform. Maybe it worked like this. So this will be an array of platforms. So then we will say for int i is zero, i less than what? How do we loop through this? Do we have to pass in the amount of platforms? Or can we get the number from this? I think it, we could use some kind of math here, like um, size of platform divided by size of platform. Is that how you do it? Like if we say int count equals size of platform, so this is the whole size of all the structs in this array. And then we divide it by the size of one platform. Then that should be the count of the platforms in this array. Then we can pass any amount of platforms in here. Is that true? I don't know. Let's see. While i is less than count, i++. plus plus. And then we do this. And this should be in fact platforms because it's multiple platforms. So how do we check this? Let's first of all say that the platform platform is platforms index i. And then we should check that if the ball y is what? If the ball y is greater than or equal to the platform dot the bottom of the, uh, the top of the platform. So the y position, platform dot y. And in fact, ball, ball y plus ball dot size. Let's do it this way. So this is the bottom of the ball. Let's say int ball bottom is that. So if ball bottom is greater than or equal to platform y, and we can remove this, but this is not the only thing. It also has to be, it also has to be within the x position. Now in Raylib there is actually a collision. Collision. Check collision circle rec, which we can use to detect the collision. But there was some problem with this. But let's actually do that. So it has to collide, first of all. So if check collision circle rec, so we give it the center, vector center. So this is the x and y. So I'm not quite sure how to do this. <laughs> Should I do vector two ball position is x ball dot x, y, ball dot y. Or maybe I should save the 
vector 2 in the ball instead of x and y. That might be good. But I guess we can do that too. So this is the position of the ball, okay? And then the radius. So we we'll say ball position and ball dot size and the rectangle. So let's call it platform rec and let's say rectangle platform rec will be will be what? It will be dot x is platform dot x dot y is platform dot y. Can I just cast it into a rectangle because we have the same things in there? Not quite sure. Width equals platform dot width and height equals platform dot height. And let's do that and that and put them all on their own lines. Great. So we check the collision between the ball and the rectangle. And then we return one. Now this is not very beneficial to return one from here. Ball on platform. And we should loop through all of the platforms here as well. No, sorry, we should pass in the platforms. So ball on platform, platforms. And we can set the ball y to this. So let's comment this out at first and figure out where we should actually position the ball. And then we have to make an array of platforms. So let's create it here. Let's say platform, platforms. Now I'm not quite good at C yet, so I'm not quite sure what is the best way to create an array of platforms. But let's put three platforms, because in C you have to always set how many of things are in arrays. So we will say that platforms will be an array of three different platforms. And then we will say platforms 0.x equals 0. So this will be the ground. And platforms 0.y equals window dot window height window height minus let's say 10 so with the floor it's going to be 10 pixel and what else do we have on the platform we have width and height so platforms zero dot width will be window width because it's the length of the whole thing and platforms zero dot height is 10 pixels okay and then let's add two extra platforms so this will be 1 and this will be 2. And where should we position these? Let's put this at abs windows window width times 0 0.1 and window width times, I mean window height times 0 0.7 and make this abs again. And width will be abs window width times 0 0.3 and height is going to be apps window height times 0 0.05 something like this and actually i will copy this here as well and this should be two and i will put this on the other side so i will put like 60 percent of the window width and let's do 50 percent let's actually put like 30 and width is going to be the same and height is going to be the same okay so now we have some platforms that we can then draw on the screen and we actually have to draw them on the screen. So let's see if our loop actually works. So let's do the same thing down here. So for each of these platforms, we will draw them. So count is size of platforms and divide by size of one platform. And then this will be platform dot width, sorry, platform dot x, platform dot y, and platform dot width and platform dot height and let's see if this thing actually compiles probably not no size of on array function parameter platforms will return size of platform star okay undeclared platform ah because i have to say actually i can just say platform index i maybe that is better to do the same thing up here to platforms index i and here as well platforms index i and let's compile it again and now it actually compiled and it opened and we have two platforms here and there is in fact a ground platform as well that's 10 pixels now it seems that 
really doesn't really support this fractional scaling in Ubuntu because I have like zoomed my screen but this is definitely not 800 by 600. I mean I guess it is but it is not zoomed like everything else. But our ball has disappeared now and that means that our collision detection doesn't work. Now we get a warning but I'm not sure if that matters or does it matter. Size of an array function parameter platforms will return size of platform pointer. So does that not actually work then inside the function? So if I set the count to three, then will it do something else? Yes, actually now we stopped there and we can jump, <laughs> but it's a bit weird. And we can move and then here we fall down. Okay, it kind of works, but not that great because it gets stuck in weird positions and we get stuck in the bottom of the platform as well. And we can jump and I can jump over here and then I get stuck here. Okay, so I will do this. I will pass in the int count and then I can do platforms and the other one worked. So I can do size of platforms. Uh, sorry, I have to say platform count and I will set this here. Int platform count is size of platforms divided by size of a platform. And then I can do the same thing down here. Platform count. Now I still have to manually put it here. So I might as well like define this somewhere. But let's see if this now works. And we don't get any warnings. And we can jump. And it still works. Great. And I can go here, but it's very weird. <laughs> so now we have to fix this. So first of all, when we jump and we land on the platform, it goes in a weird place. So how do we fix that? I guess we should return the platform from this function. But then what do we return if we don't find a platform? Can we return null then? How do you do that C? Can I return null? And this will be platform index i. Return value does not match the function type. How do you define a function that might return null? Or what if I return the i? And I say int. Can I return null from an int? I can. So yeah, well I could use this. Maybe not the best idea, but I'm not sure how to do it the proper way. So then we can say here, if ball on platform is not null, and we have to actually move this in its own thing, we will say current platform. And I will say int current platform is that ball on platform. And then we can set the ball y to the position of the current platform. So we can say that ball y equals platforms index current platform dot y minus ball dot size. Now what's going to happen here is that when we jump from below and we hit the bottom of a platform, it will jump on top. So let's, let's see. We got some warnings. Returning void star from a function with return type int makes integer from pointer without a cast. So I have to figure out how to do that. But now we're actually jumping on top of this platform. And if we jump here, then we also go there. Now it does something weird there when it like jumps. Maybe I have to check the collision before I draw the actual ball on the platform. So if I jump here and I jump over here, then <laughs> now I disappeared actually for some reason. So what does this mean? Comparison between pointer and integer. Okay, well, I can return minus one. <laughs> Isn't that the convention in these kind of things? Minus one. So then if it's not minus one, then we do that. Let's see if that helped anything. At least we got no errors. So now if we jump, we are still able to jump. We can jump on here. And how about we jump there? 
Okay, that fixed that. So probably that was the problem. But now if I jump here, we will go there. And if I jump here, we will go there. So how do we fix that one? We have to say that the ball has to be moving downwards in order for us to stop. So let's do that. How do we check if we are moving downwards? Well, if the velocity is greater than zero. So we can say here, where we are checking ball on platform, we will say that... Actually, we will not change this function. We will only change this part. So if um, we have to, this lower, and we have to say if ball dot velocity is greater than zero, then we move the ball. And in fact, we do this as well. So if we are currently on a platform and we are moving downwards, then we move ourselves to the top of the platform and we stop moving. I think that makes sense. So now I'm jumping here. If I jump there, I go there. It still flashes funnily. And if I jump over here, and I jump to this one, then now we are going through it, which might be acceptable in some games. But then we stop on the top. So that's great. That's pretty good. I kind of like that. But what is going on here? I think what's going on here is that because we are checking the collision between a rectangle and a circle, then in the edge we are not actually colliding, because the circle is a circle. But then once we collide, then we jump up. And then we are not colliding anymore, so then we go down again. So that's an interesting problem. So perhaps I should treat them both as rectangles and then just have some kind of threshold where it falls off. So I would say check collision rec rex. Okay. Check collision rex and it takes two rectangles. So let's actually say rectangle ball position. And let's do X and Y. Now I actually want to have like a like an image instead of a ball, like my own drawing or something. So it might be a rectangle in the end, so maybe I will just change the whole thing to a rectangle. But I guess we can imagine now that it is a rectangle. So the x will be ball x minus ball dot size and ball y minus ball dot size. So this will be the upper left corner of the ball and then the width will be ball dot size times two and the height will be ball dot size times two as well and i only pass in the platform rec and let's call this ball rec ball rec and platform rec and let's not take the ball bottom we don't need that anymore but now what will happen is that it will like overhang and actually something weird is going on here too but it will like overhang here. We are floating now there. So we should do something. And something weird is going on here because we are moving all the time. So first of all, let's imagine that the ball X will be a bit further. So let's add like 30 pixels. And then let's make the width less 30 pixels. And if I now run this, then now we should like fall this way. So that's a bit better. But now there's something weird going on here. It's probably that this height is not going to be the same as the rectangle height. So what if I put minus one? Mm, minus six. That's just worse. So let's put plus one. Okay, now it works. Okay, great. Uh, it's not that great. 
Wait a minute. Here it's not working. It should fall off already. Like it should fall off here. But on this side it will actually fall in the right place. So what does that mean? So the ball rectangle, the x is the ball x minus the ball size. Okay, plus 30. Sorry, has to be minus 30 this one. And the width minus 30 as well. Right, maybe. Let's see what happens now. So now if I move here, it, it falls off very quickly. And here, it doesn't work anymore. What? So let's take a look at this. So ball x is going to be in the middle. And we subtract from that the radius. So we will be here. So then we should add to that a little bit so that we draw a smaller rectangle. Yeah. So let's put just 20 pixels. And we add to this, right? Yes. And the y is just going to be that. It's going to be the same. And the width is going to be the ball size times 2. But we have to minus the 20 pixels so that we are in the end of the ball. And we have to minus another 20 pixels so that we are in the correct place. So that is going to work. So now if I go here, then I will fall down. And if I jump here and I go here, then I will fall down. Okay. That looks pretty good. <laughs> hey, it's good for a newbie. So I can jump here and I can jump here and everything works and I fall down. But that is kind of weird. Why are we drawing the ball inside of the platform? Draw circle, ball X, ball Y, ball size. Because we are adding to it afterward. So we in fact have to do this in the beginning. And now if we run it, then now if we jump here, yeah, now it doesn't go through the platform or like inside the platform. Now that's a bit weird. Yeah, so when we jump from here, we are gonna jump so that we touch this, but we don't go over it. But we start to go down while we are touching it. So then our test to see that if we are going down will be true. And then we will jump over that one. So <laughs> how do we check for that? We could modify the check here. So collision rex. So what if we imagine that the ball is only the bottom half or bottom 25% of the ball. So we would say that the ball y will be ball y plus ball size divided by 2 and height will be ball size divided by 2 plus 1 and then if we run this now whoa <laughs> what is going on here ball y minus ball size divided by 2 sorry i was gonna add to it and refresh okay so now we can jump here and we go here and we can jump over here. And if we jump here, then it works perfectly. So we can jump from that to this one, but we cannot jump from here to that one because it has to be the bottom fourth of the ball has to be inside the platform. Then they are considered touching each other. So that looks pretty good. Great. It just took me one hour and 20 minutes to do this. I think that is a very good time frame for creating a bouncing ball in C. So now we should actually make this like a game. Perhaps I should commit these changes already to GitHub because this is pretty cool already. <laughs> okay, so let's continue. What should we do next? Let's run this game again and see what we could do here. So how should this game work? We could like add more of these platforms and then we could either move up or we could move right. How should we move? So we could like move the image to the left as we are moving to the right. 
So we will like pan through the world we are in. So how would we do something like that? Is there some kind of like function that would like pan, that would like offset everything? Like translate, you no, know, uh, pan. Oh, we have some sounds here too. We can, we can create sounds. That's pretty cool. What could it be called? Point, point circle, point poly, point line. Hmm. Offset. Image resize canvas. Update mesh buffer. Glyph info. Camera 2D. Wait a minute. Camera 2D. Begin mode 2D. Okay. Camera. What does this mean? Get world to screen 2D. Okay, so I think there is something in Raylib that actually can like move the camera around. Okay, so it's called a camera. Defines position orientation in 2D space. That's great. Displacement from target. Target. Rotation. Zoom. Okay, let's try and use this camera 2D. Begin mode 2D. Get camera matrix. Get world to screen. Begin mode. How do I move the camera? Camera mode. I don't really understand how this works because they're all just get. There's no set. Like how do I set? Update camera. Here it is. Okay. Update camera. Camera mode. Okay. Let's try and do this. I guess we have to say here mm, begin camera 2D. What was it? Update camera. Begin camera. Begin mode 2D. Okay. Begin mode 2D. And we have to pass in the camera. Camera. And let's set the camera here. Let's say camera 2D camera equals what is camera 2D? Camera 2D struct offset target rotation zoom. Okay. So this has to be a vector too. So let's call this dot offset equals camera offset and dot target equals camera target and rotation equals zero and zoom equals does it have to be zero or one maybe one makes more sense and these are going to be vector twos so let's say vector two camera offset is i guess this has just an x and y yes x equals let's start with zero and y equals zero as well and then we will have the same with the target, camera target. I think that can be zero as well. So I think what we can do with this is that if we use the rotation or the zoom, then the target defines where we are going to rotate from or zoom from. And in fact, this will be a comma, not a semicolon. And here as well. Okay, so then we can say begin mode 2D camera. Do we have to set it in the while loop? Perhaps not. I think it's up here. Begin mode 2D camera. And then do we have to call end maybe? <laughs> end mode 2D. And let's see if that actually now still compiles. It does and it looks just the same. But can we then move the camera around? So when we begin drawing we can move the camera. Or should it be before begin drawing or after? Update camera. And we are going to get the camera and the mode from a 2D. Mode 2D. Um, what is the mode? Update camera mode. That's all. Update camera mode for selected mode. 2D. We have to go to the C literal. <laughs> so hopefully we have some sort of color mode here. No, we we'll only have colors with the C literal. Uh, mode. Set mode. 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 Is there a mode with capital letters? Full screen mode. Matrix model. That's it. Update camera. Well, thanks for not telling me what it is. Let's try <laughs> zero. What does it do? 
Wait a minute. That is a camera. But this is camera 2D. Is there another one? Camera. Update camera 2D. Update camera 2D. Update camera. Okay, well, what is camera? Camera. Struct camera. Okay, we don't have just camera. Uh, camera 2D. Get, get screen to world 2D. Get world to screen 2D. Begin mode. Get. There's no set. Set camera. Camera set. Camera. Let's ask ChatGPT. <laughs> Maybe that is a good position to ask ChatGPT. So let's say, how do I move the 2D camera around in Raylib in C? Okay, so camera 2D camera is zero. Why do we pass in zero? Target offset rotation zoom. Okay, basically what I did. Ah, oh, you can do this way to like cast it as a, okay. Camera dot target, get mouse position. <laughs> so this is gonna follow the mouse. Begin mode 2D with the camera, okay? That's what I did. So where does it actually? Ah, I don't have to update anything. I just, this updates it. So I have to have it inside this. So when I have the begin mode 2D inside the loop and I pass it the camera, then it moves the world around. So I guess I have to do this as well. End mode here as well. Begin drawing, begin mode. Okay, so other way. This way and that way. And then if I set here camera dot x minus equals one. So now we should move to the left with every frame. Nope. Sorry, it wasn't called x. Offset. Ah, offset x. Camera dot offset dot x minus equal. And let's run this. Look at this. We are actually moving now. That's great. That's amazing. So now what we can do is we can set the camera offset depending on the x position of the ball. So we can say that camera offset x equals ball dot x. That means it would be moved by the x position of the ball. So we have to minus the window width divided by two because I want the ball to be always in the middle. And we have to make this negative. So can we do this? Minus that. So if I do this, then I move <laughs> and we're moving now. That's great. So now we're actually following the ball. That's great. Now, maybe we should only move it once we get to the edge. So in the middle, it won't move. So how should we do that? We should say if ball.x is greater than window width times 0 0.8, then we set the camera offset x to minus ball x minus this, right? Is that correct? And else if it is smaller than window width times 0 0.2, then we do that. Something like this. So now if we go here, then we start to move. Okay, that works perfectly. And when we go here, we start to move here. That's great. I am now a professional game developer. That's pretty cool. Now we just have to create more world. So how do we do that? So first of all, we should create, let's add a comment, um, create floor. And we will set the width of the floor to window width times 10. And this should be floor. And we should add one more thing. Let's do this. Let's say camera offset. Um, can we just do this? If, if camera offset x is smaller than zero, then camera offset x is zero. So we don't actually go like past. Sorry, if it's, if it's greater than, wait a minute. It always has to be negative. If it's greater than zero, then it's zero, right? So um, if I build this now, then it's not gonna move this way. And <laughs> I actually still fa fell off the thing. So it's not going to move this way, but if I go here, it is going to move. Okay. And now we have lots of 
world here. Great. So then we just add platform. Could we add just like random platforms? Let's do that. So how could we create random platforms? Let's do something like int world width is going to be 800, of, let's say window width times 10. And then let's say int platforms is going to be world width divided by what? Let's say platform width. And let's say int platform width is going to be 300 pixels. Let's just hard code this for now. Or should we use like a window width times 0.3? So that's the platform width. And it's going to be apps. And the amount of platforms we are going to... Uh, platform count. Platform count is going to be world width divided by the platform width times 0 0.9. No, times 1.1. So we add 10% of the platform width, or in fact, we add plus 0 0.1 times window width, window width, or 0 0.2 times. So what I'm doing here is I will say that we will divide the world width by the platform width plus 20% of the window width, so that there will be 20% of the width of the whole world available, like empty, no platform and in that position. Okay, and this will be platforms, platform count, plus one for floor. And then what we will do is we will say for int i is zero i less than platform count i plus plus, we will draw a platform. And let's say int platform x is going to be like window width times 0 0.1. And let's do apps again. Apps. And then we will set the x to the platform x. And then we will say platform x plus equals apps window width times 0 0.10. Uh, 0 0.2 two divided by three. So there will be um, three platforms per window width. Something like this. I don't know what kind of math I'm doing here, but this should work somehow. And the Y will be some random number. So Y will be window height times rand. Um, how does that work, rand? I think I have to like do something like include time dot h and then I can do here something like s rand which is like seed rand and I get time zero is it something like this so we actually get a random number and is rand going to be from between zero and rand max so rand divided by rand max so this will be from zero to one and times window height minus window height times 0 0.3. So what am I doing here? So the y position of the platform will be a random position on the y axis, but the maximum will be this. So this is max y, platform max y. So in platform max y is that window height minus 30%. So why don't I just do window height times 70%? And this should be abs. Not sure if I even need abs, but <laughs> I will use it anyway. So this is the maximum position the platform can be at, so that we don't put it too close to the floor. And then we should add to this a little bit so that we are not too close to the top of the screen. So let's do plus platform min y and that will be like 10% of the window height min y so it is going to be a random number somewhere in the y-axis and width is going to be 0 0.3 let's just have it there for now and this should be platform x and then we add to the platform so that the next platform will be actually the current 
platforms with plus that. And they should be not one, but I. So platforms I. So we move the next platform to the right by the width of this platform plus a third of 20% of the screen because we're going to have three platforms per screen around. Maybe my math works out. Maybe it doesn't. And we don't have to count the platforms anymore because we have a set count here. So let's see if this now works. Now it's probably not the best idea to create the whole world at once, but I think it's going to be okay. Uh, why are they all <laughs> at the same position? And why don't I have a floor? Um, because I started from zero. I had to set this to one and less than or equal to that. So now I have a bottom here, but all of the platforms are up there. So I should in fact have more space. So I will put 30% and the random is not working. Why is not working? Oh, uh, let's ask ChatGPT. How does rand work in C? S rand time null. Random number is rand. Okay. Random modulo 100. Okay. So let's do time null. And let's run it. It's still the same. Is it because I used int here? Will it convert this to int already and then do the operation? No, no way. Let's do that. All right, after a long time of debugging why rand gives me zero every time, I created this monstrosity <laughs> that actually produces a number. So let me create a function for this. So let's create here float rand float and return this. So this returns a random float from 0 to 1. And then I can go here and I can say rand float times platform max y. And I can in fact move this inside here. And now this should work after a long time. Okay, now we have these platforms on random positions. So I can move here and I can jump and I can do that and I can jump here and here and I can jump there. Now I should change this a little bit so that the camera m would move a little bit earlier. So here I will set this to 60 and 40 and this to 60 and 40. So now I have my game here. Now all of the platforms are a bit too high right now. So I should probably change something about that. But now I can jump through these things. So let's make them a little bit closer to each other, which we can do by changing this number. So I will call this a platform closeness and I will set it here int platform closeness is 3, but I will set it to 1. Actually, that's not a good idea. I will just do this platform spacing, and this is going to be platform spacing will be 0.01%, and it has to be a float. And I will change the maximum so platform min y will be 20% um, and max y will be 80%. And maybe I should move these up here because these are kind of like settings. So these are the platform settings and this world width, platform width, platform count. Okay, so let's run this again. So here we have our game now. Can I jump over there? Yes, I can jump there and here. And now they are really close together. I can jump there, apparently. And I can... Oi, now I fell down. How can I get back? <laughs> they are too high now. 
Okay, up. All right, the spacing is not that great right now, but at least I can move. And my calculations are not correct because I ran out of platforms already. So platform count is actually world width divided by platform width plus window width times platform space. That should be correct. And let's run this again. Okay, uh, now platforms are very close to the bottom sometimes. But it is working pretty nicely. Now, for some reason, <laughs> I fell off the world. I have no idea why, but it happened. Now, I have been coding for two hours, and I'm not sure if anyone is interested in this video, so I will end today's video here. Unfortunately, if you watched all the way to this, then I hope you're not too disappointed. Now, if you do want to see more, then please leave me a comment, and if enough people want me to continue on this, then I will continue. But right now I'm getting tired already and I'm not sure how interesting this is. So let me know in the comments if you like these kind of videos and then I will continue this project if you want me to do so. So hit that subscribe button and leave me a comment and then wait for me to make another video. And I will see you in the next one.